plan towards it, and God will put his hand on our plans and make it happen in Jesus' name. We're talking about this question number two. Have you made arrangements for your hotel, your accommodation, where you want to lodge or stay during that program? And, yeah, let, let's have it this way. Today is the cutoff time for the hotel arrangement. You just have to settle that today. So instead of, you know, deliberating and then we're still waiting and thinking and hoping and planning, this is the time for us to do something. Amen. So now, today, before we leave here, we want to conclude. Whether we need a hotel, if you don't want to do, go that route, we have hostel. The dorm is there. The dormitory, there's only maybe two or three people that have indicated interest. If you don't want to go to, you don't think you want to go with that hotel arrangement, then the hostel is there, the dorm. So today, we have to put, nail these things today so that we know where we are going. Then lastly, have you made arrangements for your transportation? How many weeks do we have to the convention now? Three weeks, probably. So three Sundays from now, we'll be at the convention ground. That means we have less than three weeks or so to plan and to move ourselves to that place. Pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So brethren, the agreement today is for us to make up our mind. We encourage us, highly encourage us to decide to make up our minds to go for the convention. We believe it's got to be done. Amen? Praise the Lord. Again, yesterday the youths were here for a youth program. We want to thank all the parents that released their children and those that took the time to bring them over here. The youth program comes up every quarter. It's a quarterly youth forum where all the children gather here and they have wonderful time in the presence of God. So parents, we encourage us to always make sure our children participate in all the programs the youth um, usually have, let's not hold them back. If you need help, maybe dropping them or picking them up, you can reach out and we'll make arrangement for that. But excluding your children from programs like this is not good. So please, let's try next time. We know schedules are tight, you're working, and you know these children have to interact. We need to bring them closer to bond and to like um, for us to know how to be of help to them and also help out where necessary. So let's try next time if your child did not participate. And the program is for children between the ages of 13 and then who are below 18. Please, 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 the youth ministry is highly in need of your children. Then don't hold them back. They need to participate in anything we are doing here. And again, for the parents that brought their children yesterday, we say a big thank you to all of you. Praise the Lord. Remember about the building project. We are still on it. And this is the time for us. The Bible says that it is time for the sons of Jacob to possess their possessions. Amen. Is any son of Jacob in the house today? I want us to raise our hands to the Lord. This is the time for us to possess our possessions. And the possession begins with that property that is facing me over there. There's a property there that we need to possess. Amen. Who here haven't heard about that property? Can I see my hands up now? You've not heard about a property that is facing us the other way. Okay, I think everybody heard about it. So please, if you've not made any vow, like we said the other time, it is not the volume that matters. It's the heart, okay? The heart behind the giving. So whatever you give, God loves a cheerful giver. As far as you have it, you want to give. And as you do this, you are creating an investment opportunity for yourself in the kingdom. It's time for us to advance the kingdom. So if you've made a vow or you've not made at all, the door is still open. We are still somehow far away from the target. The amount we need, we are somehow far away from it. And we are the people that will make it happen. You are the eyes of God, the eyes of Jesus, the legs of Jesus, the hands of Jesus here. Jesus wants to use your hand to move the mountains here. Amen. So brothers and sisters, the Lord is counting on you and I know we will not disappoint him. Amen. So remember again, when you are giving, try to put the memo there, building project so that the money will go to the uh, proper uh, account. Amen. So 
other things, the pastor will still um, talk to us to flesh out some of the information here as we go to our Bible reading, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground, and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear? Let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received a seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received a seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received a seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. For when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took, and sowed in his field, 
which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away, and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus saith unto them, Have you understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. May the Lord help us to be doers of his word in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is one of those special Sundays that we normally have. Once in a month that we connect with the global crusade that is going on worldwide. And so I just want to encourage us to be patient because God has something, a message for us today. But before we move uh, to the next session, I just want to uh, just go over a few things. Um... First and foremost, we want to thank God for our children church for what they are doing. God has been enriching our kids through the core teachers and, and volunteers, volunteer mentors. Mentors, you may not know it. Uh, we have this integrative or integrated way of raising, of catering to the uh, to the children. We have the core teachers, and then we have volunteers, youths, young adults who. Once a month, 
go to the children's church to mentor those kids. And the testimony has been enormous. The children love them. The children are, are getting better with this structure. Let's give the Lord a clap for free. I think this has been... And for all those who have been putting out their time once in a month, it's like giving back to the society. It's a community service hour that you're actually racking up. If you're one of those mentors, can you just indicate by waving your hand? You're one of those volunteers. Some of them are already there today. You won't see them. Who are, are those? Anybody here who is part of a mentor team? Okay, wave your hand. Okay, praise God. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. So we're going to, some of you will still come to you. You will let you have that gift to deal with children. You have saved and you have God in you and you have something to give to these little ones. We will come to you at some point asking you because the children church, as you volunteer your time because the children church is actually growing. The curriculum is very rich for our kids and there are lots of hands-on activities that they are engaged in. And it's about to even get better. Praise the Lord. Can I ever say it's about to get better for the children? We're about to get them more engaged. And so the teachers are looking to uh, infuse uh, music training during the Sunday service hours for the children. Meaning, at least your children should, at the end of this whole training, be able to at least play one instrument whether it's the violin or the trumpet or the uh, cello, viola, saxophone. So it's about to get better. Can I ever say it's about to get better? That they will not only come to church yet. Spiritually, they're going to get blessed. Activity-wise, they're going to get blessed. But in addition to that, we will keep them busy. Praise God. And you know, research has shown that, uh, well, Application of knowledge and intelligence is related to, to music, they say. Well, we're still researching that to find out how they are connected. But uh, it's one of those things they say. The music is very critical to development, emotional development of, of people. Praise God. How many of you here went through the children's church, system of this church, at some point in your life? How many of you, at some point in your life, my hand is like this. I went through the children's church system of this church. I was in the children's church. And if you're like me, can you just stand up? Let's see you. You went through the children's church system. Stand up. Let's see them. Some of you are grandfathers, almost grandf grandfathers already. But you went through the children's church system of this church. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look. Wonderful. Wonderful. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a clap offering. Give the Lord a clap offering. Amen. You know, this church is raising, please sit down, it's raising future generations we were enriched in the children's church system. The Lord blessed us. They were wonderful teachers. We were groomed. And, um, our, and that's where, who we are today. Through God's help, through God using the church to bring us up. And uh, spiritually. And we're trusting the Lord that even as you commit your children to us, we will not do less. We're going to replicate that. We're going to make sure that your children are well raised, trained in the things of the Lord in Jesus' name. So you don't want to miss any of these Sundays, parents. Make sure that your children are always available. Make sure that they, as of course, once we start this, you want them to be consistent so that they can actually not miss out in this aspect of their development. And as we do this, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. I will not belabor uh, the convention. Our brother has done an excellent job to remind us. I will not belabor even the housing project. We want to thank God for all those who have been giving uh, Nehemiahs, those who are like Nehemiah of our time. We want to appreciate you. We call, made the call, and you responded. And you responded in kind. You started giving, uh, even some of you, without even understanding the full details of the, of the, of the vision. But it's really about advancing the kingdom of God. When you're walking out, I tell people, stretch your hands. It's a property right in the, in the, right in the lot of a church. The church that had that place, that had this place, had that place, sold this place, but didn't sell that place, that little property there to us. But finally, they came a few weeks ago and they came to the church and said, now we're ready to let it go. And so, do you want it? Or do you want another person to come and be in your space. And you know, kids play there. The whole space you see, 
in between our, this church building and that property. All that green space you see actually belongs to that property. So another person, uh, people coming in there, they're going to fence that whole place off, meaning some of us may not be able to go through that route, even get into the backside of a church. And we are not even sure, even the uh, outdoor AC units, the big AC units that you see outdoor when you're walking, take a look, say, well, it might even be encroaching in a portion of, of that place. The parking lot, our parking lot is encroached into the portion. A whole lot of integration. And we're saying, let's save ourselves. And the church said, well, we think you all should just get it. But if you don't want it, well, we're just going to, we're just going to give it to some other people. And then you deal with whatever comes after that. And so the regional overseer, thank God for, he's leading, he's back, he says, let's go ahead. And so it was really a surprise, something that came knocking, we were not ready for it, else we won't perhaps not even bother anyone, but we said, well, we have to get a down payment, and then we'll finance the rest. And so we've been running Helter Skelter, calling for help everywhere, and uh, if we're calling for help everywhere, why not help coming also from the midst of the church, those who have a sense of vision, who are even looking into the future to say that in the next 10 years, the cost, opportunity cost of losing out from that, of losing out, that pro losing that property is more, it's going to be expensive. And uh, we're praying that the Lord will give you a sense of vision. You will do something. Even if you've done before, you can still even do more. The Lord bless you and bless you as you continue to give to his kingdom in Jesus' name. Can somebody say Amen. Uh, at the end of the service, we're going to take care of uh, those who are celebrating their birthday in the month of uh, September. We're going to pray for them, and we're going to take care of their ded dedication. But for now, we will transition to the last part of the service, and we're going to be listening to the founder of this church, the vision caster for this church, in the person of uh, Dr. W.F. Kumui, who God has used to raise this church to what it is today. And when we say this church, you and I, spiritually and all around, and we know very well he's an anointed man of God. And uh, the global crusade worldwide is going on, and we're going to tap into that anointing. The anointing of the Lord is not restricted by space and time. And so as you raise your faith, you raise your hands up to the Lord, your heart, lift up your heart to the Lord. I am trusting the Lord that you're going to be enriched today. You're going to be blessed mightily today. Now turn to your neighbor and say, happy listening. Now turn to the other one and say, don't be in a hurry because God has got something for you and you're going to be blessed. God bless you. The media will link us up. Media, over to you.
Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power. The kingdom is yours. The earth, the fullness of the world, yours. You do not want us to be in bondage. And therefore, Lord, we pray today. Everything that binds everyone, lose in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself. Magnify the name of Jesus and do wonders in every life, even today, because we pray in whose name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Now, the Lord has been talking to us on his power to lose and to set free. Now, the Lord is talking to us today on our own personal responsibility to lose yourself. I'm coming to Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading from verse 1, Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, shake thyself from the doors you cannot be waiting there and saying i'm waiting for something to happen make something happen i'm waiting for somebody to lift me up you will lift up yourself we have slept for too long we've been lying down for too long we've been helpless and hopeless waiting for uh, we we'll just open our mouth and then we we'll say let somebody there come get me up away shake thyself from the doors arise and sit down your time of rest restoration your time of recovery has now come i said your time has come it says lose thyself from the banks of thy neck did you hear what the prophet said you know, many people are waiting for the prophet. Pray for me. Pray for me. Give me this. Give me that. Many people are waiting for the prophet. Do this for me. Pray for me. Fast for me. He said, now, it's now in your hand. The ball is in your court, as they say. Loose thyself from the binds of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I'm talking to you today in this worship service on awake. Loose yourself, lest you are lost in captivity. Lose yourself. The open door is there. The power is there. Our emancipator is here. Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Savior, and the healer, the deliverer, the redeemer is here. And he says, didn't you see how he ministered to them when he came? He says, stretch out thy hand. It is it. Let, bring your hand. Let me stretch it out for you. Stretch out your hand. Did you hear when he told that man that was brought by four people and he said, arise. He didn't say, okay, give me your hand. I'm going to pull you up. Once the Redeemer is there, your redemption has come. And now you are the one. Loose thyself from the banks of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. The message once again, awake. Loose thyself. Lest you are lost in captivity. Three things I'm bringing to you. Number one, lose yourself from the bands of captivity. All the sign of captivity, all the appearance of captivity, anything, anything, even the smallest that has come into your life, it says you lose yourself from the bands of captivity. Number two, learning beyond yourself the beauty without contamination beauty is coming to your life glory is coming to your life and you'll be very careful you don't allow contamination to come again number three lifted above yourself whatever you have done you are going to go higher wherever you have been wherever you have gone Whatever territory you have covered and whatever progress you have covered, I came to announce to you from heaven that you are going to be lifted above yourself. 
by the bruises of Christ. He strives, heals us. He strives, delivers us. The bruises of Christ, what he suffered on the cross of Calvary, has come to lift you up above yourself to the level you can never lift yourself. Christ has come. He will lift you up. I am lifted. I am lifted. From this day, mark the day. Write the day. You are lifted above yourself. Wherever you have ever been, you are lifted in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Number one now. Number one, lose yourself from the bands of captivity. We're looking at three things there. Number one, shake yourself from the dirt of captivity. Number two, sold, that's the question, unsell yourself from the demons of captivity. You see, there are people, they do not put much value on their own lives. They do not put much value on their existence. They do not put much value on their possession, on what they have. Your life, the great gift of God, the possibilities in your life. And a person sells himself into onto the uh, demons of captivity. You recall the person you sold your life to, the person you sold your destiny to, and the person you, sto you sold your future to. You say, come, come, come here. I get back my life, I'm not selling anymore. I get back my talent, I'm not selling anymore. I get back my destiny, I'm not selling anymore. You'll be in possession of everything. The Lord has created you with and the destiny and the possibilities he wanted for your life. Today, you will recover them in Jesus' name. Number three, strengthen yourself. Don't, don't wait for you know, something from the outside. Actually, nothing that comes from outside can strengthen you as what is inside you. I'll show you. When Christ... The strength and the power of God enters you. When God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, dwells in you, and when the Holy Ghost, the power of God here on earth, when he dwells in you. Now, uh, the strength is not coming from outside. You don't need those hard drugs. You don't need all the marijuana. You don't need all the alcohol. You don't need all the smoking. You don't need anyone from outside of you to strengthen you. The power within will work in your life without limitation in Jesus' name. Look at that number one there. Shake yourself from the dirt of captivity. Look, look at uh, that again in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. It says, awake, awake. If you sleep, a sleep is a time of inactivity. And sleep is a time of no production. And sleep is a time of no progress. You have a brain, but your brain is sleeping. You have a mind, but your mind is sleeping. You have an able body. A body that can carry you from here to there, but the body is sleeping. We have a giant, but the giant is sleeping. And the Lord is telling us, if you keep on sleeping in the dust, if you keep on sleeping in idleness, if you keep on sleeping in expectation, I'm expecting something to come. Some get up and go and get it. And from today, you'll be a go-getter in Jesus' name. That's why it says, away. Away, put on thy strength. Ah, the strength is there waiting for you. The power is there waiting for you. The provision is there waiting for you. Put it on. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And then it says, it says, you the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. You didn't say amen to that one. The uncircumcised who are those like Goliath coming into Israel. And the Lord is saying now, he blocks the way that that Goliath, the giant of Gath, will not come into your life anymore. Will not come into your family anymore. We open the way. We open the door to the Almighty. And then we close the door to the uncircumcised and the unclean. And I want to tell you, Lucifer is uncircumcised. The devil is uncircumcised. And that devil, Lucifer, Satan, unclean, will block 
the door. We lock the door. It will not come into your life anymore. All the sick, unclean, uncircumcised that will hinder you, hinder you from getting to the top where God has a mark for you. This morning, the door is closed against them in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, shake yourself from the doors you know if, if you put an item whatever the item you put it on the ground and you think the environment is clean and you leave it there a day a week a month by the time you come back and you look at that thing all the doors has gathered there are many people that you know the, the doors has gathered in their brain in their thinking faculty in their life in their personality and they just let it there and it's there all the time and the doors had gathered and it says that when you take that cloth and you see all the dust there you are gathered over your life whatever you call it the bible calls it sin the Bible calls it dirt, the family that will just stay there. And anybody can use your body the way they want. Anybody can use your mouth the way they want. Anybody can take your destiny and, uh, you know, make it empty the way they want. But now you'll be in control of your own life. Shake thyself from the doors. Arise and sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck of the bands bands bandage bands bondage bands all the things that had bound you. you you have good hands but they are bound good feet but they are bound good mind but they are bound good eyes but they are bound good brain they are bound and good vision and good destination everything bound it tells you but now you lose yourself from the bands of your neck oh captive daughter of zion i am free who determines whether I am free or not? Somebody says, Pastor, pray for me. You know those enemies? They are the ones that will not allow me to be free. There's no enemy that is as powerful as your own inner man. When you say no to that power, to that personality, heaven will say no. When you lose anything, now when we say anything, begins with yourself. When you lose yourself here on earth, it is loosed in heaven in Jesus' name. Look at everything that has hindered you from making progress spiritually, hindered you from making progress professionally, hindered you from making progress in your family, hindered you from making progress in every area of your life, and you have been waiting, 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 and then you open your mouth, come, somebody come and loose me, somebody come and set me free. You're free by your own faith today in Jesus' name. I come to number two here. Number two, I'm looking at souls on sell yourself from the demons of captivity. You know, in life, we do not understand the intention we do not understand the proposals we do not understand the people that come into our lives anybody that smiles will say come in anybody that you know stretches out his hand will say have my hand anyone that says can i have your life okay you want my life here is my life we sell ourselves to people to demons to destroy us, to the people that will get rid of every good thing we wanted in life. That's why it says in verse 3, it says, For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for naught. Think about the people you've given uh, the precious things in your life to, and you sold yourself. You go to school, and you have, you've never met this child before. He might be a demon inside, and, uh, you know, a friend outside. And he says, I'll be your friend, without asking, who are you? What do you have? What's your intention? Do you know my goal in life? Do you know my pursuit in life? Are you going to add to me? Or are you going to take away from me? We don't ask any question 
I want to be your friend. Yes, you're my friend. I'm your friend. I want to be your companion. Of course, here am I. And I want to have, and I want to take everything you have. Look, I have, we even begin to tell them, like Samson, Delilah, you know what? You recognize the power. I'm going to tell you everything, even the prophecy before my birth. I'm going to tell you everything and told her everything. And something sold himself. Here comes Ahab. And Ahab looked around. He didn't see any beautiful lady in the land. A king. And then he got this foreigner. A worshipper of Baal. And he was supposed to be a worshipper of the almighty God. And with the rolling of the eyes, of the painting of the face, and with the everything that she could, uh, you know, present, uh, Ahab said, looks like a beautiful woman. There's the most beautiful woman in the world. Ahab, you're about to sell yourself. And eventually Jezebel came in, brought in, Baal worship in the land until everything was totally devastated. And the Lord says, you have sold yourselves for not. Ahab, tell me, what did you have for selling yourself and selling Israel, the nation, to Jezebel? Nothing. Something. Tell me now. You sold yourself to Delilah. Tell me what you got. Nothing. And I'm going to ask you, what have you got? Think about you must think. You sold yourself to alcohol. You sold yourself to hard drugs. You sold yourself to a gang. You sold yourself to a secret society. Now, let's analyze. What did you have before? You don't have now. Every good thing you had before, you don't have now. You sold yourself. You sold your life. You sold your brain. You cannot even think. What's the result of the action of my hand? Ye have sold yourselves for naught. But thank God, we will unsell everything we have sold. I said, we will unsell everything we are sold. It says, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Without money? Oh, can I? Ever since I sold myself, and then now here is my situation. How can I be redeemed and recovered and restored without money? There's something greater than money. It's the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And he will redeem you. He will restore you. You become as full as you were before you did the selling. A new life is coming to you today in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here, I'm talking of strengthening yourself against the dictatorship of captors. You know captors? Captors, those who capture people. And those who bring them into captivity. Over the years, over the decades, over the centuries, they develop methods by which, although you are captured, they know you'll be trying to find a way to come out of captivity. And so they come with quite a lot of gadgets, a lot of things psychological, a lot of things traditional, a lot of things spiritual, by which the cattle will keep someone in perpetual captivity. And as you are thinking, I can overcome that, I can overcome that, the following day, a new thing comes out that you've never thought of and you've never seen. The captors, they are evolving, evolving, everything they can do to keep you in captivity. But your captors will fail. Yeah. There is Christ, the conqueror, who has come to set us free, and he says, whether your captor likes it or not, you're free. Yeah. What are you? Amen. Yeah. Amen. The result of all the maneuvering of the captors in your life, today they are destroyed. Yeah. Today they are buried in the ground. They will never rise anymore. Yeah. It says, put on thy strength. And then put on that beautiful garment. He tells us, and he says, the strength is there. The strength is there. You will be strong. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 
And I'm reading from verse 10, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, finally. You've had other things in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Finally, you've heard some things, uh, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, here is Sunday, finally. You've got some miracles, you've got some healing, you've got some manifestations of the power of God. Finally, my brethren, be stronger in the Lord. <laughs> you lost an amen. amen. Be strong in the Lord. Why? Because everything outside the Lord that may come against your life, the Lord in whom you dwell is stronger and greater than them. Be strong in the Lord. Why? Because every voice you will hear from your own mind, every voice you'll hear from strangers, from enemies, all those voices, there is a Lord dwelling inside you is stronger than them all and so finally brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might that's the power that is greater that is higher that's the power that will totally swallow up every other power against your life in jesus name look at verse 11 in verse 11 it says put on the whole armor of god every armor has its part the singing has its part. The preaching has its part. The prayer has its part. The orchestration has its part. Everything you have has shall come. Everything have. The part is, I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that. Put on the whole armor of God that she may be able to stand. Our time has come to stand. Against every other power. Against every other thing that not does down in the past. Our time has now come. Say, my time has now come. I'll be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Look at verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Take unto you. Now, he didn't say, give unto them the whole armor of God. They know the armor of God, and they recommend it to their children. My son, have you heard? Ye must be born again. Yes, dad, I've heard. But dad, are you born again? Uh-uh, don't ask me. I'm telling you, my child, what is good for you. The water that is good for your child is good for you, for you to papa and mama. And the, the new life that is good for your daughter. My daughter, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do that. And ladies should do that in life. They are red. Mama, thank you for your counsel. Have you taken the counsel you're giving to your daughter? Pastor, here we come. All the members of the church, when you go out there, no corruption, and make the Lord proud, happy about you. Thank you, Pastor. Have you done what you are telling the members to do? You see, the armor of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, it's for everyone and it's for you. And before you tell others what to do, tell yourself. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Some people say it's an evil day. It's a corrupting day. It's a destructive period. And what can I do? That's what you have to do. Even in this evil day, at this evil time, put on that whole armor, and I've been done all to stand. I will stand. I will stand. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In verse 15, and your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the darts of the wicked. 
How many darts of the wicked? How many arrows of the wicked will you quench? Oh, you're destroyed. They will not take effect anymore in your life in Jesus' name. And then verse 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Then in verse 18 it says, Praying always, praying always. Now, praying always does not mean I kneel down 24 hours of the day. You know, you are going and you are doing your work. There's a challenge like, uh, you know, that came to Nehemiah and said, Lord, help me. That's all. Like Peter was thinking, Lord, help me. Like Jeremiah 17, 14, save me, heal me, and I shall be healed. A short prayer that comes out like that, and the Lord has listening ears, and he says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're coming to point number two. Point number two, I'm coming to learning beyond yourself. Learning beyond yourself. Now, if all we learn is what we have already, we will not go beyond where we are today. If all we learn is what is a little circle of the family, we will not go beyond a family. If all we learn is what I, I, I love that my primary school teacher and my mind is always there. If all we learn is from that primary school teacher, we will never go beyond the primary school kindergarten level. But the Lord is saying, there's something for you to learn. There's something for you to learn. You want to get up. You want to rise up, you want to move on, you want to move forward. There is something for you to learn. Learning beyond yourself, the beauty without contamination. Beauty, where is that? Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That's the beauty. It brings glad news, good news, glad tidings. And it says, and it bring the good tidings and the gospel, the gospel that will set us free. It says, therein lies the beauty that publishes peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says unto Zion, thy God, Rain it. That's beauty wrapped up like that. The beauty of heaven. The beauty of holiness. The beauty of happiness. All the days of your life. You learn beyond yourself. And that's when you have real beauty. You understand? Many times we look inside. And as a voice, self-talk. And it's talking to us. And as you look inside, more inside, more inside, you become more sorrowful. And you remember all the bad, bad things. And you look more and more inside. And you, and you remember all the things that stopped you in the past. Look away from yourself. And look at Calvary. And look beyond yourself and learn. And then you'll come out of that sinking feeling in Jesus' name. Amen. Three things. Number one, number one, the gospel of salvation through his name. The gospel. Learn that. Learn that. The gospel of salvation through his name. Number two, the goodness of the Savior for all nations. Learn that. That whatever nation you are in, wherever you are born, the goodness of the Lord will reach you there. Yeah. I said the goodness of the Lord will reach you there. Yeah. There are people... In our own country here, they look around, they cannot see any goodness. They say, everything is going down, everything is going down, going down the drain. And then they begin to look outside and they go. They say, I'm escaping from our country. And they go there, doctors go there, engineers go there, lawyers go there, professionals go there. They think they're escaping bad, bad things. And then they get over there. The land, according to them, the land of plenty, the land of opportunity, and the land of prosperity. And they, as they got there, they discover that even to pay house rent, and to feed yourself, and to school your children, and to have buoyant economy for yourself, 
they say it was better for me when I was in my country and they're looking for ways to come back and there's still people that will not see any good but your goodness will come to you then you don't have to run away anywhere your prosperity will come here your progress will come here. Number two is the goodness of the Savior for all nations. And then number three is the godliness of the Son. Now in our nature. The Son brings his own nature into our nature. And that brings godliness. Look at number one. Number one is the gospel of salvation through his name. I say, chapter 52, I'm reading from verse 6. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, shall they know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, how beautiful. Upon the mountains, at the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publishes peace, and that bringeth good tidings of good, of good, that publisheth salvation. Salvation. The good news of salvation. The gospel of salvation. Turn away from your sin. Turn to the Savior. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That's the good news. You receive that. You accept that. You believe that. Salvation comes to you in Jesus' name. Look at the last line there. Thy God reigneth. And when you receive that salvation, God will reign in your life. Sickness will not reign in your life. Calamity will not reign in your life. Evil, the devil, will not reign in your life in Jesus' name. Like God reigneth. You wake up in the morning, say praise the Lord. Thank you, God. I slept last night. I'm awake now this morning. And this morning, this day, is another day for you to have the opportunity to reign in my life. I go to the office, evil power, charcoal, the spread on the chair or whatever, will not reign in your life. God will reign in your life. You get to the market, and all the other market people is always calling Jesus, Jesus, and he doesn't worship our idols with us, and they want to do something, whatever they do, they get it from the sea, they get it from the bush, they get it from the forest, they get it from, you know, one man sitting there on the doors and uh, writing something, wherever they get it, all those things will not reign in your life. The God of heaven will reign in your life. Sickness will not reign in your life. Calamity will not train in your life. Accidents, accidents every day and every year will not train in your life. No more. They will not train anymore in Jesus' name. Thy God reigneth. Look at number two. Number two there, we're looking at the goodness of the Savior for all nations. The goodness of the Savior for all nations. Those online, those watching, uh, uh, you know, on television, those listening on the radio, or you have your tablet there with you, and you're watching, you're listening, any nation where you are. The goodness of the Savior will reach you in that nation in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 15. 52 verse 9, break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, the Lord has made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations. All the nations, he hath made bare his holy hand, holy hand of blessing, holy arm of sustenance, holy arm of deliverance. They didn't say your amen. Holy arm of redemption. The, uh, the Lord has made clear, bare, visible the holy arm in the eyes of the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see. The salvation of our God. I will see. The salvation of our God. We've all the time been looking at the destruction of the enemy. The destruction of Satan. And we've all been looking at the corruption, the calamity, and the evil of the evil doers. Turn your eyes and focus your mind on Jesus. And you will see the salvation of our God. The redemption of our God. 
the healing of our God, the liberation of our God in Jesus' name. Point number three there, number three there is the godliness of the Son. The godliness of the Son now in our nature. You see what he has come to do? He left heaven. Did he have something he didn't have in heaven? He's looking for on earth. No, but yes. There's nothing he needed for himself that he came to this earth to look for. But he came for you. He saw that all the goodness and all the godliness available that God has supposed made available here, your eyes were not open and you could not see them. And he said, okay, I'll go there. I'll open their eyes and they will see the goodness that God has packed and provided for everyone on earth. He was in heaven. He needed nothing for himself, but he knew there were men and women that were crippled and they were crippled physically and spiritually, and they could not rise up and walk into the place where the provision of the Lord is. He said, I'll come there, I'll raise them up, and they'll be able to see, they'll be able to walk to where those goodness, those good things are. Ah, that's why he says now, he's going to give us now his own godliness, his own lifestyle. I said, chapter 52, verse 11, depart ye, depart ye, go ye, out from this, out from this, touch no unclean thing. And then he says, Go ye out of the midst of her, be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. We bear the vessels of the Lord. What's inside that vessel? The vessel of the Lord, grace, goodness, godliness, oil, the oil of joy. The oil of peace, that's what you have inside that vessel. And you are bearing the vessel. What does he say? Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from things. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord so that your life will not contaminate the content of the vessel you bear. So that your lifestyle, your practice will not contaminate the content, the oil, the joy, the peace, the power that you have inside that vessel. How do you like it? That somebody is, you know, bringing you food, and while he's bringing the food, he's talking, and all the saliva from his mouth. Is getting to that food. Uh -huh, uh, you don't want to eat that. That person has, uh, you know, some 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 germs there inside the mouth, and it has contamination inside the mouth. And it's all the way talking, 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 and it's saliva with bacteria is coming to that food. I say, why don't you stop talking while you're bringing my food to the table? That's what the Lord is saying. We preachers and we pastors. And we who declare the goodness of God, we don't have, we shouldn't have anything in our lives, anything in our families that people will hear and say, he preaches good, but his life is corrupt. He's stealing the money from the church. He says, we well, should be clean so that the contamination in the life of the preacher will not get into the content of the vessels we're bringing and we are clean and you are clean and the goodness of god will be multiplied in every life in jesus name we're looking at verse 12 in verse 12 it says for ye shall not go out with haste without prayer ye shall not go out with haste without meditation you know the people they're running they're running they want to come and minister and they forgot to pray and they forgot to reach the world and they forgot to have the grace of god sufficient in their lives to minister life to the people who are dying don't be in a hurry for ye shall not go out with haste but not go by night for the lord will go before you as we're going back home, the Lord will go before you. Those apparitions and evil things you used to see, and the cobweb you used to see on the way, you will see them no more. 
and those enemies that you know, always you know they are standing there and wants to see them in their peculiar color of dress and uh, they say you are coming out of the church now come to me here and still control your life all those evil controllers of life and destiny they go from you in jesus name for the lord will go before you and the god of israel shall be thy rare world in the rear that is behind you nothing will shoot you down from behind in front of you nothing will bring you down in jesus name all the stumbling stones all the pebbles and all the dangers the lord will clear out of your way your lord will go with you and your lord will come behind you i come to you. point number three now point number three is lifted above yourself lifted above yourself i don't know whether you are taking notes you should know where you are today this is the level you are today because the lord is going to make you come above beyond that level in jesus name every area of your life we are not going down we are going up i am not going down i am going up lifted above yourself now there's nobody that can lift you above yourself among the people that are below you it takes somebody to come above you and lift you up above yourself there's nobody your your peers the people horizontally that can lift you up above yourself it takes somebody that is up there with power up there with exaltation up there lifted above all names and he is the one that will stretch down his hand and will lift you up and as you surrender everything everything to the hands of the lord you cannot go worse you cannot go down you're going to be up in jesus name lifted above yourself by the bruises of christ three things we're looking at number one the amazing blessedness and supremacy of christ number two the astonishing bruises and suffering of christ number three the accomplished boundlessness of salvation in christ look at number one number one we're looking at the amazing blessedness of the supremacy of christ isaiah chapter 52 verse 13 behold my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high that's the lord he died on the cross he was buried and he rose again and god almighty has highly exalted him highly exalted him that at the mention of the name of jesus every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that jesus is lord to the glory of god is exalted extolled very high and he is the one who will lift you up today he will lift you up you'll forget the dungeon where you were before you'll forget the valley where you were before you are lifted into amazing blessedness in jesus name look at number two here number two we're looking at the astonishing bruises and sufferings of christ i see a chapter 53 and we're reading from verse 4 surely he has borne our grief he has carried our sorrows any sorrow you have there he'll carry everything away and then it says yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of god and afflicted it says in verse 5 verse 5 but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes and with his stripes make it personal and with his stripes i am 
healed. The bruises that came on Christ, that made him to suffer, that is what has now given us astonishing blessing and benefit. Number three here. Number three, we're looking at the accomplished boundlessness of salvation in Christ. The accomplished boundlessness. When you think of the salvation he has given us, when you first choose to think, salvation in my heart, that's good, in your soul, in your body, in your life, and thou and thy family shall be saved. And your family and everyone that you come across, the salvation will keep on extending, extending to everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. Your life today, your life tomorrow, your life on earth, your life when you get up to heaven, the salvation will be accompanying you and going with you every time in Jesus' name. Amen. When you are asleep, your salvation is still there and it's at work. When you are awake, your salvation is still there and it's at work. And your salvation is nearer to you than any enemy can be close to you. Your salvation is there, closer to you than any problem, any perplexity of the world. And the Lord will make you have, know, enjoy all that boundlessness of your salvation in Jesus' name. Now, in Revelation chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations. Now, let me tell you before I go on. When you look at that multitude, whom no man could number, of all nations, you'll find me there among them. <laughs> I'm talking about myself. I say, here on earth, I have salvation. And there until death, I have the salvation. And then I cross over and I see great multitude, a heavenly host. I said, when you look, look very well. Look very well. I tell you know my face. Look very well. You'll find me there. <laughs> How about you? How about you? I will rejoice what you won't get over there. I'll find you there. Where's my brother there? I'll find you there. Where's my sister, my daughter there? I'll find you there. It says, after this, I beheld, and look, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the land, closed but white robes and palms in their hands. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. We got salvation from God, and then we go back to him, and we lay the crown at his feet. Salvation to our God, which seated upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And then in verse 11, and all the angels that stood, stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures and all before, and they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshipped God. Look at verse 12 and it says, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God. How long? Forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Verse 13, in verse 13, it tells us about the question, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these? Who are these? Which are arrayed with, in white robes, and whence came they? Verse 14. In verse 14, and I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. All the trials, all the temptations, 
all the problems will come out of them. Amen. You will think as you look at the persecution, the tribulation that the early church went through, you'll think you'll not find them on this final day. Yes, you'll find them. You'll think all the persecution and all the negative things that blew against our lives, you will think that they will blow us now, we'll remain down there forever. But no, we will be in that final multitude because they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That is it. When you come to the Lord and you're washed in the blood of the Lamb and he looses you from all the chains of sin, all the suffering, all the shackles, he makes you loose and he sets you free. And now he puts spring under your feet, power in your heart, and you're walking in the way of righteousness on that final day. Praise the Lord, you'll be there. I've been talking about somebody. Who am I talking about? Where are you? Raise up that hand, stand up wherever you are. The Lord himself has come to set us free. And to loose us. And now he says, loose thyself. Any yoke there? Any bondage there? Any idolatry there? Any secret cult there? Any gang there? Any hard drug there, anything you sold yourself into there, give it up and say, I own sell. I'm not selling my soul anymore. I'm not selling my destiny anymore. I come and I come to Christ. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be redeemed shall be set free, and the blood of the Lamb will wash you whiter than snow, whiter than snow. And then when the roll is called up yonder, your name will be called. You'll be there. You will be, you must be there. Raise up that hand again. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for the commandment and decree that you have made, that we lose ourselves and the unclean, the uncircumcised will not come into our lives anymore. I pray, Lord, everyone here, sinner, save them, seek, heal them, bound, deliver them, sold to slavery. Lord, unsell them and make them free in Jesus' name. And I pray the mark of redemption, the work of redemption will be seen clearly in every life here today in Jesus' name. And I pray as your people go, no Philistine will follow them. No circumcised person will follow them. And no unclean demon will follow any of them. Free. 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 Set free by the liberator, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're free indeed in Jesus' name. Go in this your freedom. Go in this your liberation. Be happy, be joyful, be successful, and keep on going higher, higher, higher in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. As you go, remember the evening crusade starts five o'clock. Come early before five. Come with your neighbors. Go. I'll serve something that um, 
many of us we are getting tired and then we need to work on ourselves but mentally we need to work on ourselves uh, that uh, we are doing all our best to come to the church does not mean we shouldn't respect God in any way so God will help us in Jesus name uh, including me I work in the night from Tuesday to Saturday so I come to the puppy street on the I come and pick people on good to pick people on Sunday morning then you can see how that tiredness is affecting me then I came with me to uh, because he's in the grade 12 he does the assignments and then but I've been telling him he need to respect God more than any other thing Radimentary, please let us continue to honor God. Don't say because Pastor Matthew said this, I will not come to church again. It's not the best. We just need to be saying the truth. God will help us. Uh, Lisa, you are trying. God will continue to help you in Jesus' name. And I understand everything. So, and then that's why you will see, my brother, you need a lot of work to do. The, I told you the last time the work is big, bigger on me. The only thing that is giving me the joy is our production on YouTube. Then uh, I told Pastor that uh, one day that okay, if nothing is happening, everybody respect the way my family behave outside, and that uh, that's enough for me to continue to open the church. And in America, you beg people to come to church. <laughs> Very people to come to church, and you can see how bigger the DC is. That's not an excuse, but you can see how bigger. Uh, Brad Dimitri, don't put your cap on the inside the church. Hmm? Yeah, but remove your cap for now. We are inside the church. God will help us. In America, we beg people to come to church, it's very, very challenging, and then. I pray that God will use every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Not like in America, where uh, Africa, wherever we are, <laughs> we are running to come to. So, and then the, the regimentary talk about the population is not increasing. The last time I told him it's very challenging to increase the the church population, whereby there's a lot of. Um, how can I say it? Uh, uncommitted. If we are not so committed to the church policy. I remember there was a time we always go for evangelism, etc. Then, but in short, every one of us that we are coming on Monday, like Bradimentary, Lisa, I came with me and then by the grace of the Lord, you are following all with spirits. Let us continue to pray more, more prayer, and God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. It has not been easy, but the grace of the Lord will continue to be with us. And then for Lisa and Dimitri, I know what they are going through. Uh, the joy of the Lord will continue to be their strength in Jesus' name. And then every one of us, by the time we get to the kingdom of God, uh, we are not going to be rejected in Jesus' name. Let us continue to help each other in faith. Hold each other in faith. Let us know that whatever we do, we do it for God and not for human being. And as a result of that, we will be able to concentrate and focus on the Almighty God. I want to appreciate you on Saturday. They always be here to clean the church. You can see how clean the, the church is. And then there's one thing. Uh, it's very hardly for them for them to miss the church service. Hardly, hardly, you don't see them in church service. So I pray that God will continue to help them in Jesus' name, and the grace of the Lord will continue to uphold them in all other things, especially preparation for coming to church on Sunday. God will help every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us know that we still have a lot of things to do. As a deeper live Bible church member. 
We don't say because we get to this stage, then we relent. We continue to move forward. And then God is not going to use any other person except you, except me, except every one of us that sit down here. And the Almighty God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. Our uh, name is very more popular than the way we are. Uh, recently, I look at the internet, and uh, the internet was saying we are the most influence, uh, influential YouTube user in Charlotte. Free. When you look at that kind of thing, you see that God really loves us. And then uh, we have TV program, we have most of the things that even the big, big, big church does not have. So, but we will not see because we get there, we are relenting. We will continue to move forward, and God will continue to help us in Jesus' name. So, if you have any other thing, I uh, will still let us know. Uh, any other thing that you want to say? No? Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.